it's your girl, Shara Lynn, and you're watching Speak the League on Alamo City Podcast Network. Hey, this is George Iceman Gervin, and you listen to Sweet the League. What's up, everybody? It's Sweep the Leg, Rudy Compos Jr. here. Uh, it's going to be a really quick show today. We want to get into some Stefan Diggs talk, obviously, the trade that happened. Uh, I see a lot of Cowboy fans also um, talking about why the Cowboys weren't able to do it. I'm going to get into a little bit of a talk slash rant over that as well. Pretty much NFL talk today. Like I said, uh, it's going to be a pretty short show today. Uh, Derek Irvin is not here. Uh, Gio and Derek both have uh, appointments that they had to be at, so they're not going to be here today. Uh, Rock should be joining here in just a little bit, but if not, we'll like I said, we're going to talk about Stefan Diggs. Hope everybody's good out there. Final Four weekend uh, coming up here. Tim Gonzalez, thanks for coming back, Tim. Appreciate it. Uh, you got your Final Four team set. Uh, the women's bracket, obviously the uh, Iowa LSU game. That was a another classic. Uh, loved the game. Kayla Clark's just a, a a baddie in herself, man. Uh, enter the transfer portal. Actually, there probably is some news coming about that, Tim. So. Um, uh, just be saying, be tuned into that. There might be a something with the transfer reporter here pretty soon with myself. Let me get into Stefan Diggs trade here. So, you know, the Diggs trade in itself, it's it happened this morning earlier today. It bolsters the Houston Texans offense even more. You've already got, you know, uh, Tank Dell, uh, Nico Collins, you've got now Stefan Diggs. Dalton Schultz was a great addition. For the Houston Texans, they were able to get Joe Mixon. Of course, you saw the success uh, from C.J. Stroud last year. Everything's going right for the Texans' way. I like the deal. Is Stephon Diggs an explosive wide receiver? He can be at times. Don't put him in the same category as a Jamar Chase or a Justin Jefferson type of player. But for the Houston Texans, it makes a lot of sense, especially since you don't have a first this year anymore. Uh, you go out and you make a trade, giving up a second next year, not this year, but next year for Stefan Diggs. And, you know, the the whole trade broke down in itself. I, I will admit it, it was a great trade by the Houston Texans. You're only giving up a second for next year. Uh, but I believe in return, they were also getting a 20, uh, 2024 six-round pick, too. So they were able to get a pick in return for that, uh, Stefan Diggs, to go along with the pick. But also, but most importantly is they still keep their picks in this year's draft uh, for like a second round. But uh, what I like about the Diggs trade is that it fills a really big need for the Houston Texans, which was an explosive wide receiver. Uh, we got the Rock joining here now again. Hey, Rock, what's going on, man? What's up, man? How are you? Good, man. Good. Cocking over the uh, Stefan Diggs trade. We're only going to be here, like I said, for just a little bit here uh, for Sweep the League. Uh, shout out to my wife. It's her birthday today, so I'm not going to tell you how old she is. Happy birthday, she's, Ms. Gina. I'm she's sorry I have to do with Rudy's ass. <laughs> yeah, she has to do with my ass. I'm taking her out to eat tonight, so we got a dinner here in a little bit. But um, the the thing with the Texans, man, it I, it's, it's a deal that puts them – up into the upper echelon to compete in the AFC. Um, defense was already there. The offense has been bolstered by the Mixon and now the Diggs deal. It's a sexy, it's a sexy move, sexy transaction, transaction. But like I was telling everybody, Rock, it's he's not a Justin Jefferson. He's not a J uh, Jamar Chase. He's not an explosive wide receiver. Is he CD Lamb? I think CD's a little bit better than Stephon Diggs. But he's just a receiver that makes sense for the Houston Texans when it comes to Stephon Diggs joining the Texans. No, no doubt. I mean, he's a he's a big name, notable name, and he's you know stats speak for himself. His career is. But the big thing I saw with this trade, other than you know, obviously the Texans are going all in, you know, with the CJ Stroud still on a rookie contract, getting those pieces around him. But the big thing takeaway is is you don't know how Stephon Diggs is going is going to look, you know transitioning to Houston is he going to be mad that maybe he's not getting all the targets sucked up to him as that number one guy you know you still have a Nico Collins over there John Mechie uh Tank Dell 
Dalton Schultz. You know, there's plenty of weapons, and he's going to get massive looks. But the thing is, is Stefan Diggs going to be okay not being that number one guy? I mean, by his name, would you say he's number one? Yeah, but if you look at Tane Dell last year, he was electric. Um, so you're going to see how he's going to transition. It's a good pickup. I love the pickup. I mean, I, mean, I wish the Cowboys not necessarily traded for him, but, you know, did something as – got a big name such as that, you know, kind of went all in. But, I mean, who knows? It's going to be weird transitioning. I mean, he had some problems in Buffalo. Does he have problems in Houston? We'll have to see. Yeah, I mean, it's an all-in move, obviously, by the Texans. It's it's a great move by the Texans. I don't think he's going to give them any problems. Uh, D'Amico Ryans is probably a no-nonsense type of guy. But I like the offensive coordinator there, Bobby Slowick. I mean, he's going to get the most out of all three receivers. And let's not forget – when you've got CJ needing help in the running game, they did add Joe Mixon, very, very explosive back. I see the Texans probably needing to bolster that offensive line a little bit more. That's just in my opinion. Every other box that needs to be check marked on the offensive side for the Texans has been checked. And let's not forget, I mean, this is a team that wasn't expected to go into the playoffs last year. It was expected to still have a ho-hum type year. They came out explosive. They continue to be explosive throughout the entire season with C.J. Stroud. This year, you're starting to have Texan fans talk about it's Super Bowl or bust type of year because that's how high these expectations are. I still say pump the brakes a little bit. You've got to give this team a little bit of time to gel. Can they gel? In the season, yes, they can. You saw it last year. They just came out of nowhere. They've added the pieces they need. The defense still needs to get just a tad bit of a polish. The offensive line still needs to be polished. But if you're asking me who the best team in Texas, it it resides in Houston easily, man. Mm-hmm. No doubt. I mean, I'm a Cowboys fan, diehard Rudy, you know that. But the Texans look way better than Cowboys on paper right now. They do, man. And, you know, I see a lot of Cowboy fans talking, and even in a group chat that I'm in, a couple of them, they're talking, well, Cowboys could have easily had Diggs. They could have given up a second-round pick. They could have done this. I mean, Diggs went for nothing, and we are just sitting there doing nothing. Rock, I, I, you know me. I don't defend Jerry Jones a whole lot. I'm not a huge Jerry fan. I'm not a Cowboy fan by all means, but I'm actually – I'm having to understand and see where Jerry's coming from because – You've got – you didn't pay Dak Prescott this season. You know, he's going to come up for for a new contract after the end of this season. You still got to pay CD. You've got to pay Micah Parsons. You're going to have guys coming up that you have to pay. Well, one thing that Stephon Diggs wanted was a new contract, man. He wants to get paid. So as Cowboy fans need to understand, there's just not enough money to go around to pay all these guys. So if you're going to lock up – cd lamb and then you go and lock up stefan diggs there may not be much money for micah there may not be much money for dak prescott that's why cowboys have to stand put and not make these big trades or these big roster moves because brother you still got to pay your own players man and you got three Mm -hmm. well i'm gonna say two of the best and cd lamb and micah parsons that are already due i think in 2025 both guys are due for a contract. I think Parsons is 2026. He's in 2025. So mm-hmm. these guys got to get paid pretty quick. But you got to also pay Dak if you're going to pay him at the end of the season. There's just not enough money to go around, man. No, no doubt. You know, and I understand the Cowboys' frustrations, even my frustration with the free agency. But I'm being a realist. I mean, it's so hard for the Cowboys just to pay everyone. I wish they can go after, you know, everyone in the row. Just I wish they had like an MLB like esque uh, salary cap where they can just go sign everyone and. Just make it make make it work, and hopefully, if the talent fits on paper and they all gel together, but it's just not it's not reality. They're going to you know face some tough decisions. If those Cowboys fans wanted to step on Diggs, maybe you don't see a Micah in the near future, or you don't see like a Trayvon Diggs in the near future, or, or even a Dak Prescott. I mean, we could be talking about next year. Who should the Cowboys draft in the next coming draft, or who should they go after free agency? I mean, you see that that the wall right in the wall is looking like Dak's not going to be resigned. So, what's the Cowboys future? You know, if they did resign him, then Stefan Diggs was out of the picture. But, I mean, who knows? I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what the Cowboys' plans are. I wish they would make some more moves, but it looks like they'd be all draft. Yeah, it's going to be – it's an interesting offseason so far for the Cowboys. I don't see them making any type of trade. I don't see them making any type of moves any more than just kind of just putting Band-Aids here and there a lot on their spots, man, because 
again, you if everybody wanted Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs even wanted to come to Dallas, obviously play with Trevon Diggs, his brother, but it's the money part, man. I mean, you, you saw they didn't play when when you saw they didn't pay Dak Prescott. That should have told y'all something out there mm-hmm. that they they don't have the cash to be throwing out to get some of these big time players, knowing they still have to re-sign a lot of their own free agents. I mean, shit, dude, they didn't even sign Tony Tony Pollard. Mm-hmm. I mean, that leaves their running back, you know, pretty scarce that whole position. So it's going to be interesting to see what goes up in Valley Ranch. I mean, I don't. Uh, do you first see the Cowboys doing anything more in the offseason, or is it going to be strictly through the draft? No, I think it's going to be strictly through the draft. I mean, you you can kind of just tell. I mean, maybe you'll see the Cowboys go after you know, one of those journeyman guys or a guy who has ties to Zimmer um, or Mike McCarthy itself. Maybe them taking a chance on a, a guy who used to be a former high pick. It's always the same Cowboys, you know, tell. I mean, I was surprised they got Eric Hendricks and convinced them to, to come here instead of San Francisco. I mean, it was a uh, real surprise, but I mean, I like the move, but they still need to make some moves more on the defense side. Offensive side, you still got to find that number three guy. I mean, Jalen Tolbert showed flashes last year, but I mean, is he ready to make that jump? And, um, you know, are we really going to rely on Brandon Cooks as the number two now with Gallup out? So, I mean, it's just going to be a lot of talks of what's going to be happening. I'm um, just hoping there's, a, there's some at least, you know, big improvements in the draft. You know, I'm, I'm one for them trading back to get more capital to make fill holes in their team, but who knows, man? I mean, I'm just a fan here. <laughs> You're just a fan. That's what a lot of people end up saying. You're right about the – I mean, the whole situation in Dallas, I mean, you – you're not Tim Gonzalez, but Dak's not going to take a pay cut. Oh, 100%. No, Dak's not going to take a pay cut. So you're probably going to have to end up moving on from Dak. Um, mm-hmm. If you know he doesn't take a pay cut, you're probably going to end up seeing Trey Lance next year as a Cowboy starter. Um, the whole CD Lamb. I mean, who's the most important free agent coming up for you? Is it Dak, CD, or Micah? I mean, if you had to pay one guy, who would it be? Micah. I think so. I mean, I mean it's it's going to be Micah. No doubt, you know, it's no shot at Dak, no shot at CD, but it's going to be Micah. I mean, you have a generational S talent with with Micah Parsons. I mean, CD, you know, unbelievable player, unbelievable talent. Um, no, nothing against them, but I mean, you know, it, it's always nice to have a top receiver, but when you have a guy like Micah Parsons who you can line up on any, any position in the ball who can just create havoc on the defense, you know, he was being talked about as the best defensive player next to Aaron Donald. Now, I mean, Aaron Donald John, I mean, is he the best defensive player now in the league? I mean, it's up for debate, but, I mean, it's going to be have to be Micah, no doubt. Yeah, and, you know, Tim says CD Lamb. Now, me, personally, I think they're going to be able to re-sign both Lamb and Micah. I think if there's one odd man out, it's going to be Dak. Dak's mm-hmm. probably going to be the odd man out unless he just takes a pay cut. But I think they'll be able to sign both CD and Micah. If it's only one, golly, man. You know, receivers have actually started to make a case in the NFL draft, so – I think if I had to let one go, sadly, it would probably be C.D. Lamb because I think you can find another playmaker uh, through the draft. Mm-hmm. Of course, you don't want to lose an explosive player like him on that side of the ball. But, I mean, if you only got one player to re-sign, I think Micah is a way to go. Uh, you, you can bolster, you know, the offensive side of the through the draft. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think – I and ultimately, I think they both get paid. I mean, there's mm-hmm. no doubt about that. I think yeah. if you have to maybe move on from, you know, maybe a Brandon Cooks at the end of the year, uh, you can maybe end up doing that. But there's there's going to be – I fully I fully expect Trayvon Diggs to maybe have to rework his deal to free up some mm-hmm. of the cash. Uh, five years, $97 million, I think is what he got. So I think we're going to have to rework some of that deal. Maybe even Terrence Steele might have to actually give a little bit of money back. I think his was five years, 82.5. So um, it's it's going to be interesting, man. They're going to have to do a lot of their damage uh, through the draft. It's Rockets, Rudy Cobbles that sweep the league here on the Alabama City Podcast Network, talking Dallas Cowboys, Houston Texans. Obviously, Houston had a very big day. Dallas uh, Dallas fans going crazy saying we could have had Stephon Diggs, but it's on the cards, man. Jerry's not going to go out there, get a guy, and not and not pay him. He's going to have to pay him, too. So mm-hmm. definitely not enough money in Dallas to go around for everybody. Do the draft. I mean, there's so many holes to fill for this Cowboys team. Oh, there's no, too many probably. holes to fill, man. I mean – it's almost it's almost to the point where do you just like you said 
you want to keep that first round pick, but you also want to try to get more draft capital going in. Do you take that first round, draft somebody? Do you try to move a player to get a few more picks in this draft? I mean, what is what do you think the Cowboys thinking of now? Because everybody around the league is getting better where the Cowboys are not. No, I, I mean, I think the Cowboys are going to are gonna – odds are they're going to move a little bit more down in the first round. I mean, you could see one of those, you know, better teams, you know, moving up to take a player that they may like. I've seen a lot of mocks where, you know, a Kansas City Chiefs team or like a Bills team kind of moves up to take a receiver. I mean, now look, Bills need a receiver now. Who knows if they move up, they go after an A.D. Mitchell, maybe a Brian Thomas that they like or an Xavier Worthy in those spots that I've seen. Um, them beginning mocked. I see that Tim Gonzalez asked, uh, should Dallas go after a running back? Yes, they should. Um, There's just we'll, nobody worth a first round pick. Oh, I'm yeah. No, that's that. what I was going to read. No one worth a first round pick, but um, I'm hoping, you know, they go after someone maybe in the second or third. Um, but yeah, I can see Dallas moving down, just getting those extra picks to fill those linemen. I mean, you know, getting more picks in the top 100 is only going to make your team better. Mm-hmm. Um, I just feel like it would be beneficial for Dallas. But then again, if they stayed put and, got, and went O line, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fault them if they went receiver. I mean, I know they, they, it's a need for them, but I mean, I'm more of the O line type of guy, or they go after a defensive player. Like I've seen a lot of mocks go after them getting Chop Robinson out of Penn State because they love and there's ooze within uh, when anyone's super uber athletic and has those physical traits like that. They, I can already see them talking about, oh, it's another Mike esque player with Chop Robinson. Mm-hmm. But um, I just feel like they should go O line. I mean, they need to solve that issue and prepare for the future from them. Yeah, you know, it's 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 going to be interesting to see what they end up doing in the draft, man. I mean, it's something that I feel that they will – they're going to have to address a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of stuff mm-hmm. in the draft. Um, they're not going to get the free agents. They're not going to get the free agents to come in. Uh, it's tough, dude. It's going to be tough for the Dallas Cowboys. This is rock. This is really toxic. Like, we're only going to be here for a couple more minutes. Um uh, Wife's birthday, man. I got to head out to the wife's birthday, but also I got a lot of other stuff coming up. So definitely uh, talking Dallas, talking Houston here. I, I, I've seen a lot of people talk about J.J. McCarthy in this draft, man. Mm-hmm. I fully – I don't know why the talk of J.J. McCarthy is moving up in the draft and all this other stuff, and he's making you know waves, and Minnesota wants him and this and that, but – is there any possible way? And I'm throwing this out there as a dumb idea. This is a very dumb idea, but again, it's for conversational purposes here. But no, you didn't re-sign Dak Prescott. You're not making any moves. Minnesota has two picks in the first round. Is it possible to get one of those picks from Minnesota? Just saying, you know what? Here's Dak. I mean, it's kind of one of those, and he's not Herschel Walker, but it's kind of one of those deals where you trade away the farm being Dak Prescott, knowing you have stuff already there in CeeDee Lamb or whatever, and just go into this season with no expectation mm-hmm. and just prepare for the future. I mean, there's, there's a lot of teams that want a quarterback, but, mm-hmm. I mean, does Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison want to actually be there for a rebuild with one of these guys? I don't know. They're more unlikely and more keen to play with a veteran. I mean – Tossing it on the board, do you think anything sticks there? I mean, it could stick. I mean, and just to go off for everyone that's listening, it's not something that's been confirmed or we hear rumors, but anything's possible. I mean, coming up to the draft, you hear weird just crap just come out, and then the day of the draft, you just see things that come out of nowhere. I mean, moving Dak necessarily, maybe you'll land a first-round pick. That would be possible, plausible for the Cowboys, but, I mean, who knows? I mean, either way, they're still going to pay him, even if they traded him. We'll still get hit with some money, but I mean, mm-hmm. if they can somehow land a first round pick, hallelujah, they did it. You know, they can go in the season without expectations, as you mentioned, kind of prepare for the future and maybe, maybe look for that guy where they get him on a rookie contract and prepare around them. I mean, but if they somehow didn't, I mean, it is what it is. And they're at the right with Dak. It's someone that you know, but I mean, like you said, I agree with you. If you're Justin Jefferson and Jordan Eisen, are you going to want to play with a rookie guy, you know, knowing you're uber talented and waste and i guess you could say arguably waste some years in your career or do you want to play with a veteran i mean i'd probably go on the ladder of wanting to play with a veteran with aspirations that you want to win but i mean it could stick rudy i mean who knows it's it's been weird for me seeing how mccarthy's gone from being projected originally for you know bottom of a first round type guy to go being reported as the number two guy um 
I mean, we we all saw him throw so so few passes in, in the in the playoff, and now he's getting you know shooted up all the draft boards, which is super weird to me. But I mean, it could be all smoke and mirrors, man. I don't know. Yeah, uh, McCarthy runs a decent pro set offense, mm-hmm. obviously with Jim Harbaugh was his head coach, but it's not going to translate to, in my opinion. I mean, you have maybe the ceiling is Kirk Cousins at that. I don't mm-hmm. see very much. I don't see anything other than that, which Kirk Cousins is bad. I mean, he just never really won anything, but he's not bad. But it's so – if I'm Minnesota, I'm probably looking and making phone calls at some of these players and seeing, you know, who's out there. Um, obviously, I can still get a quarterback later on in the draft, especially if I'm giving up one of my picks in the first round. You're usually you're basically using both picks to get up to the top three, top four, at least mm-hmm. minimum top four to get one of these rookie quarterbacks. But knowing in hand that some of these better quarterbacks are going to drop in the first round, maybe second round. There's no reason why I wouldn't make the call to get one of these veteran quarterbacks. Um, it's weird, man. It's weird because normally you don't really talk high on the Texans all the time. It's always, you know, Dallas is the America's team. Dallas is Texas's team. And, you know, it's all cowboy, cowboy, cowboy. And, man, has the the script flipped on this one. It's Rocky Garza. It's Rudy Campos Jr. Drake Mays Pro Day, man. The GMs were nuts with Drake's performance. I – I'd kind of slow my roll on Drake May. I'm I'm a Tar Heel fan, obviously, but um, you know, quarterbacks come out of Carolina haven't really <laughs> been all that. And I mean, it's it's been Mitch Trubisky, it's been Sam uh-huh. Howell, now it's Drake May, another top quarterback in the NFL draft. Again, kind of hold back a little bit. Um, I, Drake, to be honest, this is the way I see the draft. I see the Bears screwing it up and going Caleb Williams number one. That's the way I see it. I mean, if I'm him, I probably would go Jordan Daniels before Caleb Williams, but I see them going Caleb Williams. I see uh, the commanders probably going Jaden Daniels at two. Then this is me. If I'm the Patriots I and Minnesota wants the third, I, I'm taking Minnesota's, what, 11 and 23 and just mm-hmm. going down. I don't – you can have my third Minnesota can get Drake me or JJ McCarthy, whoever you want. And then I'm sitting there at 11. I'm the Patriots, man. You know what? I have a, I have a new head coach. I have a new scheme. I need as much draft capital as possible 100%. to build this team. So I'm trading down, getting two first round picks, maybe a couple of other picks, maybe another first round pick in the following year. I'm giving, I'm, I, and it's funny because I'm going to say this name and people are going to laugh, but I've got Jacoby Brissett there already. So just give me Jacoby for a year. I can draft a QB later on. I can go get a Bo Nix. I can go get a Michael Penix. I can go get even a get, uh, Michael Pratt. Even. It doesn't matter. Just get a quarterback later. Get another playmaker. Uh, by then you have you know that low in the draft. You can go get a Malachi Corley later or something like that. So, I mean, there's a lot of different stuff that you can do there. Um, but all in all, I mean, we're going to see what happens in the draft. It is uh rock. It is Rudy Campos Jr. Fortunately, guys, we have made it. We're making a very quick show today. Um, we're going to have to end the stream right now, but we'll come back to you tomorrow with some more sports talk, some more NFL talk. We just want to get on, talk about the Houston Texans, uh, the Dallas Cowboys are quick, but for rock, it's Rudy Campos Jr. Until we sweep the league again tomorrow. We'll see you later, guys.